Genome editing, which is also called gene editing, is a group of technologies that give scientists the ability to change an organism's DNA. These technologies allow genetic material to be added, removed, or altered at particular locations throughout the genome. And there have been several approaches to genome editing that have already been developed. But a more recent one is known as CRISPR-Cas9, which people often simply refer to as CRISPR. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats for CRISPR, and then CRISPR Associated Protein 9 for Cas9. Without any context, this probably sounds meaningless, but by the end of this video, it will make a lot more sense to you. The CRISPR-Cas9 system has generated a lot of excitement throughout the scientific community because it's faster, cheaper, more accurate, and way more efficient than any other existing genome editing methods. But CRISPR isn't a fancy new genome editing technology that scientists created or came up with. It's actually something that already exists and is just manipulated. CRISPR technology was adapted from the natural defense mechanisms which exist in bacteria and archaea. These microorganisms capture bits and pieces of DNA from invading viruses as a way to remember the virus. Then, when the virus invades again, bacteria immediately use the Cas9 protein to cut the viral DNA, immediately disabling it. Still, I know you have more questions, so let's dive more into the technical details. So let's go back to what CRISPR stands for. Clustered, regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. What this basically means is it's a specialized region of DNA with two distinct characteristics, the presence of nucleotide repeats and spacers. So there are repeated sequences of nucleotides, which we know are the building blocks of DNA, and this is distributed throughout a CRISPR region. And then spacers are bits of DNA that are interspersed among these repeated sequences. So in the case of bacteria, for example, the spacers are taken from viruses that previously attacked the microorganism. And this serves as a bank of memories, and this enables bacteria to recognize the viruses and fight off future attacks from them. Once a spacer is incorporated and the virus attacks again, a portion of the CRISPR is transcribed and processed into CRISPR RNA, or CRRNA. The nucleotide sequence of the CRISPR acts as a template to produce a complementary sequence of single-stranded RNA. The Cas9 protein is an enzyme that's known to cut foreign DNA. The protein typically binds to two RNA molecules, CRISPR RNA and tracer RNA, also called transactivating CRISPR RNA. The two then guide Cas9 to the target site where it will make its cut. So this region of DNA is complementary to a 20 nucleotide stretch of the CRISPR RNA. Let's get back on track to what we're really talking about, genome editing. How is it possible? Well, now that we know how Cas9 works, we can probably figure out how we can control it to cut any DNA region that we want. This could be done by simply changing the nucleotide sequence of the CRISPR RNA that binds to a complementary DNA target. This system can be even more simplified by fusing the CRISPR RNA and the tracer RNA to create a single guide RNA. This means that for genome editing, we need two major components, a guide RNA and the Cas9 protein. After introducing a cut in the DNA, we can then trick the cell's natural DNA repair mechanisms to introduce the changes that we would want. There are two ways for DNA repair to take place. The first one involves gluing the two ends back together through a process called non-homologous end joining, but this tends to create a lot of errors which also means that nucleotides can accidentally be inserted or deleted to cause mutations that can disrupt the gene. In the second way, the break is fixed by filling in the gap with the sequence of nucleotides. In order to do this, a cell uses a short strain of DNA as a template. So scientists can supply the DNA template of their choosing, which means they can write in any gene that they want or correct a pre-existing mutation. CRISPR has made many successful achievements. For instance, in 2017, scientists were able to successfully correct a mutation which causes a type of heart disease defect in an embryo. There's also great potential for future applications like creating allergy-free foods. The allergic reactions that a lot of individuals face against common foods like eggs and peanuts or even milk are due to the presence of certain proteins. So if we could edit the genes which encode these proteins safely, the creation of allergy-free foods would be possible. Gene editing can also improve the production of biofuels, which are made by algae. For the production of biofuels, the fat which algae generate is an essential component, 
and CRISPR can be used to create new strains of algae that can generate more fats. There are thousands of more research studies exploring the potentials of CRISPR, but this also triggers the development of some ethical concerns. What do you think? Even though the possibilities are endless, should we still instill a limit to the capabilities of genome editing technologies? Let me know in the comments section below.